Universal Design for Learning, or UDL, is a design framework that focuses on supporting student success for all students with diverse learning and life needs, not just those with exceptional abilities or who need special help. This concept, which has been developed and advanced by the National Center on Universal Design for Learning and the Center for Applied and Special Technology, asks instructors to consider how they can reduce barriers or impediments in their classrooms and increase access so that all students have greater opportunities to succeed. You might be wondering, what does this mean? And where does this idea come from? Let's start with the second question because it might help to clarify the first one. Universal design from learning comes out of architectural and physical design principle of universal design. In this way of designing space, architects and planners make an environment accessible for those on the margin, and this actually helps reduce the barriers to access or entry for everyone. For instance, think about a ramp in front of a building. While this design element may have been specifically included for people in wheelchairs, it's also really helpful for people who have a hard time with stairs, parents pushing strollers, or travelers with luggage. Or how about automatic doors? These may be designed for people with mobility or motor issues, but they also help those who have their arms full or who don't want to touch a doorknob during cold and flu season. In our physical environment, then, we work to reduce barriers people may encounter to access a space. And this idea can be translated to learning in our classrooms. Whether we recognize them or not, our students encounter barriers to learning. By proactively considering what those barriers might be before the learning interaction takes place or class starts, we can increase the opportunity students have to see academic success. For instance, do you find you have a lot of non-traditional students in your classes? These learners might encounter very specific barriers to success. For instance, they might be commuters. They may also have to balance work and life responsibilities along with their academic course load. These non-traditional students may be veterans who may face unique challenges rejoining civilian life. Or do you have students who come to your class with different interpersonal expectations? In a single course, I'm sure you've had students who can't stop talking and students you can't get to talk. These students may experience different barriers to achieving academic excellence in your course. But by thinking of what these barriers might be ahead of time, you can design your learning environment to maximize their respective potential. It's important to note, though, that reducing these barriers does not mean watering down course outcomes or overhauling curricular content. Instead, UDL offers a way of thinking about how students can work toward those course outcomes or how they can learn key curricular content while still maintaining standards of academic excellence. UDL strategies may reduce the need for some accommodations for students with certain disabilities, but will not eliminate the need for all accommodations. Rather than focusing on a disability model, UDL centers on a model for social justice to support all diverse learning needs. What UDL does do, though, is provide some structure for rethinking how you can effectively design learning in your classroom. There are three principles you can incorporate into your teaching as appropriate. First, you can provide multiple means of engagement or ways in which instructors can make content interesting, relevant, and motivating for students to learn. Also provide multiple means of representation of information to your students as they work to develop disciplinary knowledge, or ways we provide materials and resources using a range of presentation formats and techniques. And provide multiple means of action and expression as students seek to demonstrate that knowledge or a variety of ways in which we can assess how students demonstrate their skills and knowledge. We explore these principles more in depth in our next video, but if you find yourself working with students with diverse learning and life needs, think about whether UDL and its principles might work in your classroom.